Yeah, so I, the original idea was to have sections of the film in progress uh, interspersed within the PowerPoint. I, I flew in basically yesterday from, from Asia and uh, so had to sort of put this uh, PowerPoint together very quickly because it didn't sort of come in the format I expected. So my apologies. I haven't actually even gone through it once after having just finished it 10 minutes ago. So my apologies if it's not as clear as it might be otherwise. But I will speak about uh, this tradition uh, in Burma, which is a living tradition of alchemy in which mercury is used not as a uh, substance to be transformed into gold, as it often has been associated with in other alchemical traditions, but very specifically as an elixir of, if not or immortality, at least longevity and increased health and vitality. And this is very much a practice that's done by a diversity of practitioners, both monks and monasteries, as well as lay practitioners, uh, fully educated and aware of international opinion to the contrary, that mercury being obviously a highly uh, potent neurotoxin. And uh, the prevailing uh, opinion in Burma is uh, repeatedly that mercury is not a dangerous substance and that they're not frightened by it or of it. So it's this rather, for me, scary, cavalier uh, attitude towards, uh, towards mercury, which involved in my own research is sort of enter into rooms where these suddenly these red fumes are uh, rising up from, from these ancient forges. So um, this will be kind of an introduction to this world. This is a uh, free translation of a early uh, 13th, uh, 13th century text uh, which gives an orientation towards what the use of mercury involves in, in Burma. Uh, in other words, as I said before, not really as a substance to be converted to gold except under, of course they claim many that they have this capacity, but this is a, a lower calling for those who are involved in the use of mercury. Uh, so in this particular verse, a single ambrosial drop of the, mil of the milk of dragons, uh, Nagama Nyoye in Burmese, confers the one taste of bliss. All aligned in body and mind, the inner constellations meshed with the outer stars and planets. The great synchronicity is achieved. Neither inner nor outer, energy fluent, mind and body weightless, boundless, devoid of sorrow. All things bound together and free. So elemental mercury, uh, as we understand it in the Western world, is a heavy uh, silver-white metal that remains liquid in, uh, in standard conditions of temperature and pressure, named after the Roman god Mercury, uh, with the caduceus, the staff, which of course came to symbolize uh, the whole Western medical tradition. Um, and. Um, its actual meaning from the um, hydrogyrum, the Latinized Greek hydra meaning watery, runny, and argyros meaning silver. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, and the most prevalent source, of course, of mercury being cinnabar, which is widely distributed throughout the world with the greatest deposits currently in China and Kyrgyzstan and with actually very, very uh, pr uh, widespread deposits in, in Burma itself, which may have been one of the reasons why this tradition gained such a, a foothold. Uh, mercury th in history uh, dates back, the use of mercury dating back at least to 1500 BC in Egypt. Um, it was used actually as a cosmetic uh, by the ancient Greeks and Romans. Ancient Chinese used mercury in an attempt to promote health and promote the lifespan, but uh, they were rather defeated early on, and so the actual uh, use of mercury for that reason tended to disappear uh, from China relatively early on, but continues to this day uh, in similar ways in the Indian tradition, where the Indian alchemy is called literally the way of mercury. Um, medieval alchemists in, in the Western world, of course, saw mercury often as the prima materia, uh, the first matter from which metals were formed, held that different metals could be produced by varying the quality and quantity of sulfur contained within the mercury. The purest of these was gold, and mercury was called for in attempts at the transmutation of base or impure metals into gold, uh, this being one of the 
preoccupations of many alchemists. Um, and it's still used uh, within the Western biomedical tradition, uh, although increasingly being phased out because of its now re highly recognized toxicity, but still does appear as a preservative ingredient within certain vaccines. Mercury as a medicine also has a long tradition. Uh, it was used as an early treatment for syphilis, which gave rise to the saying, a night in the arms of Venus leads to a lifetime on Mercury. Uh, a fate often associated with severe side effects and premature death. Uh, it was not a happy medicine, uh, but it was nonetheless quite widespread throughout the 19th century, uh, where it was used by, uh, touted by quacks, when the, the, the etymology of the word quack coming from quicksilver, since quicksilver or mercury was a, one of the predominant ingredients in many of their tonics and elixirs. Um, it's, whoops, sorry. Uh, it's also, of course, been used in the homeopathic tradition quite successfully and continues to be available. You can buy it you know, throughout apothecaries and homeopathic pharmacies in London and used for a variety of, of complaints that tend to be associated with what are called homeopathic provings. So the same kind of symptoms that might manifest if you were to be, uh, become acutely poisoned by mercury would be the same uh, conditions that, that uh, purified mercury, or sorry, homeopathic mercury, uh, could actually cure. Mercury as a poison. Mercury poisoning can result from ingesting or inhaling the dust of cinnabar from exposure to soluble forms of mercury, such as mercuric chloride or methyl mercury. Um, this is increasingly recognized as a, as a very significant environmental threat in the world today, particularly course through uh, toxic uh, um, seafood uh, and leads to cognitive disorders in some cases with, which were of course associated with Lewis Carroll's book Alice in Wonderland with the expression mad as a hatter which was quite a, a common expression in the 19th century because of the, uh, that profession's uh, need to work with mercuric salts in the curing of felt uh, in the in the construction of, of top hats in particular. Oops, mercury as elixir. Uh, in our chemical branch of Ayurveda called Rasavatnam, the way of mercury uh, was specifically and, and is, continues to be specifically devoted to the transmutation of mercury from a toxic substance to one that promotes uh, health and longevity and vitality. This is also a tradition that continues in the Tibetan tradition to this day. Um, in the Indian tradition, it's called parada, uh, a kind of processed mercury, a therapeutic mercury, uh, and it's used both orally as well as combined with certain oils to be able to be absorbed through the uh, into the body through the skin. Um, and the various claims associated with its use in that purified form, which involves 18 steps of purification, is, and this is to quote from a, from a particular contemporary uh, school outside of Delhi that is very devoted to this, in which they claim that it leads to physical rejuvenation, amplified energy, the stilling of chaotic mental processes, and the purification of mind and intellect. Um, and it's also said to stimulate the primal life force or energy of Kundalini. Um, and as promoted, uh, through this institute, uh, it's the therapeutic use of mercury in this form. It's possible to overcome all diseases, maintain youth and vitality, prolong life indefinitely, and unveil all mysteries related to birth, death, and the cycle of transmigration, and the relationship between the microcosm and the macrocosm. 